Alright, uh, welcome to chapter 8. Let's go over here. Connect continuous probability distributions. Just remember the difference between discrete, which was chapter 7, and continuous, which is chapter 8. So in chapter 7, we looked at uniform, binomial, geometric, and hypergeometric, and the generic form of discrete probability distributions. Then we're going to look at their continuous counterparts, uniform, exponential, and normal distributions. So just remember, discrete means that there's a fixed interval between each value, whereas continuous means that there's no separation, everything's infinitely separated by an infinite number of numbers. many characteristics in the population that are continuous in nature and have continuous real values in fractions or decimals uh, such as the length of something, the height of something, time, lifespan, those kind of ideas I'm sure you can think of many more. In such cases we have a continuous random variable which is very like the discrete random variable so it's the thing that we're measuring or uh, exploring. Um, so in discrete random uh, we could do a table of values or we could do a graph. We didn't do a graph too much, but a table of values. I don't know what I mean. Um, continuous, I kind of focus more on the graph nature of things. Okay, so when we ask for a distribution, we probably want to draw us a graph. And I will learn how to do that for each of the types of distribution. Okay, so continuous types of distri continuous distributions are symmetric, which means that it's there's a value in the middle and everything's on equal sides. There's a positively skewed, which means there's a large node in at the beginning and then a tail off to the positive side of the interval. And there's negatively skewed, which means there's a tail off to the negative and a large bump towards the positive. We also have more than one node, and we call those binomial distributions. And if there's two, there can be three or four. Normally, there's only two. Okay. Um, for example, if we looked at the height of uh, males and females, there'd probably be a, a bump that was where most of the females is, are, and another bump where most of the males are. Um, with a part in between, not to say that males can't be short and females can't be tall, it's just kind of on average way that the genes work. That's how it works. Okay, uh, we are looking at the probability of a random variable, x to fall within a particular range of values. Okay, so instead of looking at a specific value, I'm going to look at a range of values. Uh, the probability of x falls within a given range is equal to the area under the distribution curve. Okay. Um, so we'll give you the formula to figure out what that area is. An area under the curve is a probability and obviously must equal 1 if we add them all together. Okay, so like I said, there's several dis dis types of distribution curves. We'll be looking at uniform, normal, and exponential. So the first one, continuous uniform distribution of the property that all values in the range have equal probability of occurring. The distribution graph has a straight line. Area under the line is equal to 1. Reference to it. Okay. So we're talking about the interval between the two green lines. So that's based on. Okay, let's look at an example. Uh, we'll drive time between Toronto and North Bay is found to range evenly between 195 to 240 minutes. So there's a probability that the drive will take less than 210 minutes. Okay, so since it's ranged evenly, we know that it's a uniform probability distribution. So 
Uh, so she, I don't know, this is a uniform continuous probability distribution because they use the word evenly. The random variable is the drive time between Toronto and North Bay. So the uh, probability uh, is 1 over the interval, mean interval, between 195 and 240, times uh, 210 minus 195, so the value that we're concerned about is to the best then to the lower bound, the lower value. Okay, so this would be the upper bound, this would be the lower bound, and this is the value that we're concerned about. And then if it's in less than, we can keep all the values below that value. So this is equal to 15, this is equal to 45, so multiply, we get 15 over 45, which is one third or 0 0.33. Therefore, the probability the drive will take 210 minutes or less to travel and the day is one third. Well, there's a couple of questions to try. We'll do a little bit more work tomorrow in class.